So as a Muay Thai referee, you always want to be positioned uh, just out of the kicking range so you don't get kicked or get caught with any crazy spinning back fist or back kicks that could happen. Also, if a fighter has a weird style, uh, you might get comfortable uh, in a certain position, but you could actually still get hit, so always be aware and stay out of kicking range because generally that's the longest weapon. Uh, but you always want to keep a triangle formation, so uh, you always want to be right here, position, and you always want to uh, make sure you periodically rotate to get the other side of the half, especially if somebody has a cut on the other side, you'll want to rotate to see if blood or something like that is getting into the eyes. Um, in between rounds, uh, after you might check on fighters or give instructions to coaches, you, you want to be look professional, don't slouch in the corner. Uh, before the fight starts, of course, give the fighters room to seal the ring and have your uh, hands either placed behind your back or on, on top of the ropes is suitable as well. Uh, I got into refereeing um, as a general, um, I guess, fight fan of uh, boxing, MMA. Actually, didn't get into Muay Thai until later. I was actually uh, a big UFC fan since I was a, since I was a kid. And so I just always thought that it would be cool to kind of have the coolest seat in the house uh, and wondered. Uh, I was always kind of fascinated with the responsibility uh, that, the, that the referee had had in a fight. And as I got into uh, MMA more, I started to like pick up on mistakes and stuff like that that referees might be making. And I was just always thinking to myself, like if I were, you know, in, in his position, uh, how I would have uh, handled the situation differently. So uh, I just ended up researching a lot. And um, one, of my, uh, one of my cousins actually told me that he heard that there was a, uh, an MMA uh, referee training course in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm from Houston, Texas. So it's like a two and a half hour drive. I'm like, well, maybe this is like a chance to actually get into this thing. So. Um, I did some more research. It was like maybe two or three months before the actual uh, before the actual referee seminar, and I did more research and figured like, okay, I should probably have like a basic understanding of jujitsu and stuff like that. So I ended I ended up finding uh, a, a jujitsu gym, and also I researched like what is the uh, predominant striking art of uh, of MMA. And I, I found Muay Thai like that, like uh, co coincidentally. That's how I, that's how I found Muay Thai. And uh, a cousin recommended uh, this gym in Houston, so I went to go check it out. And I always thought that it would be better to train uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai separate, not at the same gym, to kind of uh, avoid conflict of interest. Um, at an, to, to be specifically at an MMA gym and I would be judging and refereeing MMA fights so I didn't want to, I guess, know anybody like that so I wanted to keep the two arts separate so I started training both at pretty much the same time. Um, and so that's kind of how I got into learning basics to be comfortable enough to referee a sport uh, like like Muay Thai, but one thing led to the next and I ended up competing and did all kinds of things that I never thought that I would be doing, but I always just was a uh, official at heart, but uh, yeah. Uh, some things that you need to be aware of as a referee, um, if you can, uh, and this, this isn't going to always be the case, but you want to try to research uh, fighters' tendencies that they might have in the ring. Um, whether or not they uh, commit certain fouls and stuff like that. Now, you always want to be uh, flexible as a referee and, and process the information as it comes in, but uh, definitely researching fighters, um, especially if you uh, get assigned a title fight or some, or some prestigious fight, you definitely want to check out the fighters and see you know, if there is a history of anything. Um, also, Depending on where you are in the jurisdiction where the fights are taking place, uh, there could be like difference in the rules. So you always want to remind yourself where you are working 
and uh, study the rule set before you actually step in the ring because that could uh, save you a lot of headache later. And IFMA Muay Thai is the highest standards of amateur Muay Thai, so they take, um, they take the rules very seriously as they are uh, Olympic recognized. So, uh, for instance, you want to call pretty much all the fouls by the book. So that's really important because obviously the Olympic Committee sees that we are uh, following the rules of the sport. Um, so th those are some of the difference uh, that things might get away in like a regular show. In, uh, in IFMA we have to uh, at least demonstrate the foul that is being committed and the judges know to not score certain techniques. So. Uh, for instance, like if there is some gray area like in, in the stadium Muay Thai or even just regular Muay Thai amateur, uh, we might let some uh, foot sweeps and things like that go if it's clean and fast enough. But in IFMA, we actually have to give a warning for it. So that's one, that's, that's one basic difference of, uh, of IFMA and, and like a show that you might do in the States or in another promotion. So you can follow me on Ring King USA on Instagram, Ring King USA, um, and we'll be uh, starting a Patreon. Me and Stefan uh, Strautmeyer starting a, a Patreon group for uh, furthering um, uh, furthering education for the United States amateur organizations. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. <laughs>